Okay, so carry on from the last video. We're just going to do a few more things we can do to check this mesh over and see if everything's um, working properly so we can start rigging this. So, more things to check in here is if we select the mesh, another polygon, we're going to go to display. Actually, we didn't need to switch to polygon really, but we're going to go to display, polygon, and face normals. So about halfway down. If we just click that, what this is going to display is the uh, surface normals of this mesh. And normals is just a way of rendering the surface, and we just want it facing outwards, so where we'd expect the light to bounce off, which should be the outside of the character. So a good way to diagnose this is if we just navigate the camera inside the character. So get the camera inside, we can see that there's no normals facing inwards, which is what we want. So we just want to make sure that all these are facing out. And again, this is a thing that we want to check before rigging because we don't want to add any history correcting the normals. And you will get some that face in, like here, there's quite a few facing in. But if we just explore that a bit more, we can see actually that that's the mouth geometry, that in interior of the mouth. And even though it looks like these are facing the wrong way, if we zoom in further, so say like take this face here, we can actually see. So I'm just pressing F to frame up on that. So right click faces to select the face and then F to frame up. We can actually see that it is actually facing the correct way. So it might just, so these faces down here are facing the correct way, their normals are just pointing straight up and splitting outside this mesh. So that's perfectly normal. So, again, to get back off that, we'll go to dis display, polygons, uh, face normals, and to add this and remove it from the shelf. So up here, I've got a few shelves. Uh, J mod, because I'm called James. This modeling tab, J text for texture, J tool, different tools. So I just recommend adding different tools to the shelf. So here we can go to display, polygon display, face normals, and holding down Control Shift and click you can see that it adds it to the end of my shelf and then if we want to get rid of it we can just middle mouse click and drag this to the dustbin so I've already added it here because it's, it's quite difficult to remember that and get and go back through all these menus to click it every single time so all you can do is add it to the shelf, shelf and just click it again so if for instance so I'll take one of these eyes here if for instance the face normal so we'll get inside so no normals facing the wrong way. But if, for instance, they were facing the wrong way, what we can do is reverse normals. So with the object selected, or if it's only a few faces, with a few faces selected, we can go to Edit UVs under the Polygon menu at the top left. So Edit UVs, um, oh sorry, um, Normals even, we're working on Normals there. Um, so we'll go to Normals and just click reverse and you can see here how with this mesh selected you can see the norms are pointing out so we go inside this mesh you can actually see the pointing it in and another way you can use the tell is sometimes here you can see there's like a hard edge going around this object so with normals usually they're not going to display correctly in the viewport or they might not render correctly so you always want to check out for things like that and you never know it might just be a normal problem so in here again you can see it's added polynormal 1 which is history we don't want that when we're rigging so we want to get the normals correct before we start rigging so we know there's no history in there so the next thing we can check is um, open up the outliner so windows outliner or you can click the preset down at the bottom left and just want to check in here that all the things are out on their own they're not in groups sometimes when you combine sort of polygon objects together it will create like transform groups and we just want to get rid of everything inside there we don't need that just make sure everything's clean get everything with a naming convention so we know there's no so when you're modeling you might use different tools you might use the lattice tools things like that we want to make sure that all that's gone and most of that should have got rid of when we went to edit delete all type by history but sometimes some groups might remain so you just want to clean them out from the start 
and a good practice is just to keep checking this outliner keep deleting things you don't need and making sure everything's in the right place because what a lot of uh, people fall down is when they're rigging they'll start creating this rig and they'll create really complex rigs or simple rigs and just go through right to the end and then they check their outliner at the end and it's really messy there's things all over the place and it become, can be quite daunting to try and reorder that there might be things in there that you use for the arm that you didn't name and you might have forgotten where it was it might have been a couple of days ago that you used that so you might have to spend more time finding out what that object was and where it should belong so the best thing to do is when you create something when you create some joints and you've named them put them in the correct group and that way you're just keeping a clean house as you go along and this is really important as well as you're rigging things might go wrong so you'll get things where you're moving the arm piece and it's flipping out or things that far along or you're getting double transformations and a lot of those problems are actually caused by things in the outliner being in the wrong place they're not parented to the right things so keeping a clean house here actually helps you rig faster and saves a lot a lot more time and just makes it really simple so other things in here what we can check is we can go to windows render and editors and hypershade so there's a lot of nodes in here like meshes different deformers that we might have used to model so we can see that they're all cleaned up but another thing we want to check is if I bring the hypershade so I just went to windows um, rendering editors hypershade and in here I'm going to check, drag this down here or you can click the two views so there's a one or a top view a bottom view so the work area or a split view for both so in here I'm just going to check that there's no extra nodes that sometimes they don't display in the outliner but we just want to check that they're not in the hypergraph either so there's a few textures in here so I can select these and just hit the graph inputs and output connections to see what they are so I know this is the skin of the snail these look a bit strange so selecting these inputs and outputs and it'll graph the network in the work area so you can change these windows quite easily just dragging and dropping the separators it's the, the normal navigation holding down alt middle mouse click and drag to move about or right click holding alt you can dolly in so actually looking at these I can see now that these go to the bump and this is ramp shader that we were talking about earlier that goes for the shell shader so that's okay so just checking that there's no strange textures in here that we don't need especially if we're modeling setting up the UVs we might have like checkered textures in there to check out the texture in and how it's repeating but once we come to rigging we don't really need it so we can get rid of it so I'll check the utilities here we can select all these again graph the network if we just want to check them and we can see this is still part of the skin texture and the shell texture so they're what we're still using so we don't need to worry about them so in here we can just check certain things if they are being used so like what I said with the checker texture or you might have used some nodes for different things in the modeling or early stages and if they're not being used anymore it's a good idea to get rid of them because even though they're quite small if you keep adding things and again with the history if, you, if you've got little bits and bats here and there they just start to stack up and they can cause problems with your rigging and they can just start to lag mire increase your file size and then if you start animating this character the problem sort of escalates so keeping it as clean as possible from a start is the best way to go okay so we can see that everything's pretty much clean in here so in the next tutorial so the next lesson we're just going to go through how we're going to uh, set this character up and get him ready for rigging